Well, friends, it has been a bit since I have done an updated pantry room tour for the grocery store in my basement that I have been adding food to and rotating food through for my large family of 11. We are a big family. I do feed 11 all day, every day. We school from home. We work from home. We're from home eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. And any way it goes, you know, no school lunches out, no work lunches out. That's a lot of food that we all go through. I am also a mama who had a a very small grocery budget about 250 to sometimes $400 a month for many years for up to a family of seven so I know all about shopping as frugally as possible grocery shopping for the month meal planning stretching every penny and having something like a grocery store in my basement is all of my hopes and dreams so what my goal is in 2020 I read a book called a year without the grocery store written by my now good friend Karen Morris. We didn't know each other before. When I read her book, I reached out to her and we have talked a ton over these last several years. In Karen's book, A Year Without the Grocery Store, she talks about building a rotating stockpile for her large family and how that worked for her, plus all of her best tips and tricks for food storage buckets and emergency backpacks and all kinds of resources for families. There are a lot of good reasons to be stocked up and to be as many money ahead as possible. I know for my own family, we are self-employed. We've also had other life experiences, such as during one season, my husband did come home and he had lost his job unexpectedly. And for four months, our family qualified for food stamps. This was, I have to think through the ages of my children. It's when my now 13 year old, gonna be 14 here in a minute, when he was a baby. But that was a very scary and trying time. Of course, the Lord was faithful. We saw the Lord's hand and provision through several experiences that we had during that season of job loss. But I always thought to myself, when I grow up, self, when you grow up, when I'm grown up, Jamarelle, I would love to be as much ahead on food, have full freezers, half full shelves, be able to feed my family from our home as much as possible. And you know, I've been sharing my large family grocery haul videos on YouTube for nine years now. And so it's a matter of convenience. I still like to grocery shop every four to six weeks. I still like to build up our stockpile of items that we rotate through. As of this moment, I only have one box of my K-cups, my coffee pods for my Keurig. And so in a recent grocery shopping trip, I got four more boxes, which we only have two coffee drinkers that could potentially be up to a year of coffee pods for us. I do host a homeschool mom's night out event and there are times we host other people. So I'm just saying, even if it's six months worth of coffee pods, that would be good for me. We're down on several items. We're gonna reload these shelves. These are what I call my bathroom pantry shelves. It's other household items, it's cleaning projects, it's laundry detergent, it's all kinds of things. So we'll get into reloading those, such as the toilet paper over there. We only had about half a pack of one of those big Costco bundles of toilet paper. So I got four more bundles that we're gonna put over there. And believe it or not, we have times we're just totally out. I've missed it, <laughs> you know, we've dropped the ball somewhere and we have to stock up again. So with such a large family and I do a lot of big batch cooking, and I also do meals and share meals with other families and people in my community as those needs arise. So nothing goes bad around here. Worst case scenario, we have a hobby farm. I always have a lot of chickens, either laying hens or meat birds or turkeys, a variety of poultry. We also have been raising cooney cooney pigs almost for a full year now, coming to our one year anniversary of bringing our first cooney cooney pigs here to our little hobby homestead. So let's say we did have some fresh strawberries that we couldn't get to in time. Between the pigs and the poultry, we're okay. Nothing goes to waste. I also have a Harvest Right freeze dryer that I use for preserving food. The freeze dryer and the home canning are two skills that I am continuing to learn and grow in. I would love to be here with you at some point one day and this whole pantry is full of 
everything that I have home canned for my large family of 11 and then as I say you know sometimes I'm feeding 15 or more I would love to get there we've been making great progress on the home canning skills that I am continuing to grow in and I also in this video I'm going to give you a tour of my growing home canning pantry and I also like having the grocery store in my basement that again I've been continuing to build over the last several years because when I do have a friend in need I'm able to come in here and get a variety of things and just send those bags in their direction as needed and believe it or not you know as I go through my grocery store in my basement just something I noticed as I was here going through my mental inventory I only have two bottles of syrup left now I do have two or three containers of maple syrup but then regular old great value syrup I only have two containers left and I'd like to have 12 or so because whenever we'd go through a couple days of French toast as an example I have family members who like maple syrup family members who like just regular old cheap syrup depending on who the family member is so I like to have different ones available and then with all the naturally I'm gonna we're gonna do a little Walmart or order here too let me put in great value syrup I also come on come on you know what I'm saying I'm saying syrup there we go <laughs> I like to talk to my thumb hair conditioner so we have four bottles I have a shelf here for shampoo and conditioner we have it looks like five bottles of the suave shampoo and I have, again, so many family members with naturally curly hair. They do their own at-home curly girl method. They go through a lot of the suave strawberry shampoo, guys and gals here. And so I can have 20 things of shampoo and they're just like, mom, we need more conditioner. And we were literally out of conditioner I know it was just what what in the world are we gonna do in life so my husband picked up the couple bottles that our Walmart had but I like to order 20 or so bottles at a time and have those come and have them on the shelf so let me get my syrup also they got the original syrup and then they just have a great value sugar-free syrup that's what I get it's two dollars and 14 cents a bottle it'll let me get 12 that's good and like I said I have two so that'll give us 14 okay so now I'm going to get suave and it can be the coconut too conditioner and I will just do this Walmart shipment to the house isn't it nice that we have that in this day and age home huh? um, I will just do that so it comes to the house mm, I'm gonna go all out we had such a run on conditioners I am doing 36 I am mm hmm cuz again I got these people with their curly hair 11 people <laughs> so let's see if I can just do the shipment okay so I'm going to keep this open in case I find anything else we have a lot of hair to wash around here how much will that be hmm well if we only went through one bottle of hair conditioner a week that would be 36 weeks of hair conditioner I think we're going through two to three bottles a week around here they're a lot long luscious curly hair safe to say two bottles a week I need a calculator at this point okay divided by two so that would be 18 weeks of hair conditioner that would be about four and a half months so that's probably a safer estimate there so I need to get stock back up so I do have four and a half months of hair conditioner yeah I didn't get any dish soap well I have five dish soaps now here's something I need to stock up on I only have one thing of dishwasher detergent. I will also use the little dishwasher pod. So we have two dishwashers, again, hopes and dreams. We did not have a dishwasher for over 10 years. For over a decade, we hand wash dishes two to three times a day. So believe me, mama got an upgrade. When I got to do my dream kitchen, we got two dishwashers, hopes and dreams. But anyway, I would like to have four to six of these on the shelf. So that is something let me hold on hold on Walmart fill-in list okay dishwasher detergent okay so now I have a load of items it's all from Costco and we are going to restock several areas on my bathroom pantry shelves now so again you see we're, we're down on the coffee I would love three more things of paper plates but I didn't stock up on that this time we have some trash bags but we got more to finish filling out this area we have two things of laundry pods and I want to say it was two weeks ago we were totally out of laundry detergent and so I got four of those so one is upstairs being used one we are completely through here's the other two and I got four more these have 85 pods in them 
and the bags I got at Costco, I believe they have 152 each. So that should be good for, for, uh, let's see here, two to three months. Um, I could almost stock up on soap, but I didn't do that this time. This I'm okay with. We are ordering from Walmart more dishwasher detergent. We only have one thing of soaps. If we go to refill all our soap dispensers, so quickly we have three bathrooms, a utility sink, and two sinks in our kitchen, so that's six soap dispensers. We're totally through that. Here's our little shampoo stock up. Uh, it's mostly, let's see here, here's some more conditioner. So hopefully here real soon we've got our conditioner <laughs> loading up this area. We're good on shampoo. Um, we definitely don't go through a thing of shampoo a week. I think it's probably one of these shampoos a month. Well, I do use it, like I use it for bubble bath for a lot of the younger kids. A lot of my naturally curly hair kids only use hair conditioner. I did get another thing of Clorox wipes for over here. Down here, this is my diaper stash. I have one, two, okay, I have three box of diapers, two boxes of wipes, I have one box of pull-ups. Over here, I have three things of napkins. The rest are paper towels. Got some more of that. And then, okay, I do have one full thing of toilet paper left. So that's might as well be empty. Okay, so we got our laundry soap. Okay, so six laundry soaps there. All right. Now we got some hand soap. Guess I'm not gonna worry about taking those off at the moment. These I can put in my upstairs bathrooms. This out to rotate through. Now we have these four packs. So each one of these bundles, it's four packs of 280 napkins. We have two napkin baskets upstairs on our table that we keep full. I also only have one box of tissues, which if you get the large family sniffles, you're gonna be getting into your toilet paper stash before you know it. So this would be something that next time at Costco, I could stock up on their tissues and some more bath soap too. And that's how I do it. Before I went shopping this time, I came down here, I looked in this particular area to see what the holes were. And that's what I'll do next month. And so again, next month is probably gonna be bath soap, maybe some more napkins, probably diapers, cause I haven't bought any of those recently. What was the other thing I just said? I was saying something. What was it? Anyway, okay, I'll keep moving. Oh, tissues. That was it. We'll get tissues. just easier right now. Open, put this up. Of course I need to totally twist on a swivel here. I think I'm actually going to look for tissue and soap deals. Maybe I will add that to my Walmart order. Remind me in a minute. We'll check to see if we can get any deals. This is an air mattress down here on this lower shelf. And then priorities. Mama's got to fill the coffee stash. Roll it on inside. what's where. I don't care so much about 
rotating trash bags. So I'm gonna do trash bags next. A lot of these shelves in stock right now I saw now my husband Travis got these shelves all at tractor supply for the most part or Lowe's but I did see them this week at Costco now I want you to be on this side I want you to play Tetris the nice way get back there got it we won we're victorious okay okay got some more soap Nice. Now I do have my shelves labeled. Labels have stayed on pretty well. It's supposed to help when I have kids and teens bringing down items and putting them away. Also helps me remember what I'm doing for the most part. Pretty okay. Okay, so here we go. We are restocked. This is how I like for the shelves to be. But as I say, we're gonna I'm gonna look now and see about adding some more soap on there. In that case, I would just bring the soap forward, add the new soap to the back. Um, also, down here for tissues. You know, we, we need more than one box of tissues, and I could probably fit another box or two of diapers also. The 60 count box of eggs, friends, is now back down to $11.06. Eggs were this 60 count box that I've bought for years, especially when my chickens take their little rest every winter. Um, it was up to $32. Last time I looked, about two weeks ago, when I bought my last box of 60 count eggs, when I did all the, actually I bought more than 60 eggs, I think about 240. I have one 60 count box left from that when I was doing all of those big breakfast freezer meals. But anyway, it was down from $32 to $19 and like 98 cents. Now it's down to $11 and six cents. That's nice. Thanks for showing me Walmart. Okay, I was trying to switch out my baby wipes. Baby wipes are available, diapers. Since I have some space on that shelf. I can squish two more big things of toilet paper in there. Okay, tissues, soap, we're doing it. Add to tomorrow's order. They're like, okay, that woman with all those kids, she's stocking up again. All right, and this is my growing home canning end of the grocery store in my basement. Learning all these new things. This is just some water that I can. Why can water? It's just the same as having bottled water or other jugs of water available. And I had my big canner that does 17 to 19 quarts and it was not full, not full, but I had heated it up. And so I just went ahead and did the rest with water. I believe it's in an emergency. You need to have a gallon of water per family member per day, family of 11. So I would need to have 33 gallons of water available for a three day emergency. Now we do have a simple pump on our well so we can still get water if we didn't have electricity. But as we know in life, things can even happen to well water or to the groundwater. So I do have some jugs of water also but I wanted to continue to just add, as the habit goes, I hear lots of ladies who say, you know, it, normally it's that you have one or two rooms for jars, but I just happen to have enough for 11. So I'm just adding these over here. So I definitely, I have jars I haven't used yet, especially these pint jars, more for like jellies and jams and such. I won't do too many things in pints because again, I'm a large family mom. I have a lot of people in and out of here. Pints just don't get me very far. And quarts don't seem like they would either, except that's what's most readily available. So these are some jars that I've already been through. 
and that have been washed. I would like to stack these a little different. Anywho, and I have some other quart jar boxes that I've got, you know, two or three at a time that I haven't been through yet, but we'll get there. So I do have the cabinets under my island upstairs in my new Mega Mama kitchen. I do have a lot of my canning supplies up there and my bigger canners that won't fit in there, like my old American canner here, my Amish canner, just come down here. Okay, and so while y'all are here, I'm just tidying up a little bit. This is how I like to get things done. Have some citric acid there. I haven't used the Tadler lid, but I have slowly gotten a box here or there, and I do plan to try out using those lids as well. Now in here, I do have, again, my people who look like me, bring my jars down and put them onto the shelves. But since we're here and we have a minute, but I see some mama organization that we can do. And how this happens is I have a lot of kids. I have a lot of carriers. So just different ones bring in different boxes of these pairs down, for instance. Some pairs ended up over here and some are over on this side. So we're just going to bring all the pairs together. So I've definitely needed to get down here to do this. I do have a selection of canned goods based on what I'm planning to cook for the week that are upstairs in that nice little hutch that we got several months ago when I sprained my back. I went hutch shopping online and that's a nice antique piece that had the forklift arms put through it, but that's okay. And so I have freeze-dried items that we're working through and different canned items that we're working through. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any more pears there. Got tomato sauce. Scooch over. Anyway, I know that several folks have asked me lately, why am I using my home canned sausage or my home canned corn? different items that I canned. Why am I using those canned items in my freezer meals and other big batch cooking that I'm doing? And the reason is I'm new at this. I am growing at this skill. Back at my farmhouse, down memory lane, you can do it yet again. I canned fruits for the very first time. I did pickles. You can even look on my Instagram. I just hashtag Jamarel canning, but it looks like it says Jamarel scanning. Ha <laughs> ha. So anyway, I try to make the C capital, but if you click on that hashtag, it will take you back to some of those very first, just me reading the ball book and working through some canning projects at my farmhouse. So I'm so happy that this journey that I have been on with the Lord has brought me back to this point where I can dig back into canning again. It's like hope, hopes and dreams fulfilled. And in 2020, I was home canning a bunch of meat and potatoes then, not on the scale that I'm doing now. Now I just feel like since I've got my kitchen space and I have the tools and we, we've been plotting and planning. I mean, even all the tomatoes, you know, we processed the 380 pounds and we've got our home canned tomato sauce that was a lot of work and you and I we stashed up those tomatoes in the fall I got so many of those boxes of tomatoes they were 25 pound boxes but they had to be processed that day they were very ripe they were very ready got them for 10 bucks and we stored them and we processed them I do not have near enough tomato sauce for my family for a long time at all I mean, usually whenever I'm doing big batch spaghetti sauce, I'm using two or three of those 110, 108, 111 ounce containers of tomato sauce. But I canned it because I'm learning and we got to do it together. It was definitely quite an adventure. The tomato video should be out before this video. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will link it for you in the description below. Let's see our pears. I think we can almost fit. There we go. We can do it. That's right. Everybody make room for your friends. So anyway, back to the question of why I'm using some of these items is so I have to use it to build the habits and the skills of incorporating home canned foods, which again, my hopes and dreams with the recipes that I cook and the freezer cooking that I do and the big batch cooking that I've always done. Also things like applesauce, you know, we go through a lot of applesauce. I probably still have 
20 because I have a couple upstairs of the great value applesauce. So we are still working through this applesauce, but like once a week or so, I just pull out one of our home can quarts. I have some kids who think, I mean, this is just the best thing because mama made this applesauce. And then I have some kids who are like, give me the great value applesauce. But anyway, I'm not buying any more applesauce. I mean, that's my hopes and dreams. I would like to switch us out to home canned applesauce. But we're still going to use up the applesauce that I have. That's just why that shelf is just dwindling down. Um, we have a lot of the tomato juice. I have been using that in different recipes. When I did homemade mashed potatoes with these canned potatoes, I used 12 jars. Now, I don't do that every week and I also have regular potatoes. I don't have to use these, but I want to work in using these. I don't want my home canned food to only be for an emergency. Again, I would love to get to the point where we work hard and we do all this canning and slowly the grocery store in, the, in my basement food uh, where I had been rotating it and replacing it and just like with the applesauce, if I was not working on home canning applesauce, I would get more applesauce. I would move that applesauce to the front because I mean, we can go through two or three of these things of applesauce a week, just we get on different kicks for things. And then I would put the freshly bought applesauce, didn't mean to point this way, pretend we're at the store and this is where you buy applesauce. Okay, we would buy more applesauce, pull that already purchased applesauce to the front, put the rest of the applesauce to the back, and that way I might have three to six months of applesauce on my shelves. But anyway, so back to the home canning items. We have home canned applesauce, we have corn, we have beans, we have broth, we have some meat. Definitely we have carrots. I feel like this is many months of carrots, so I'm good on carrots. The meat, many of you have asked how we like the meat so far. So far I've done sloppy joes with it, but again, how will I know unless I use it, right? So I did my slow cooker sloppy joes using my home canned meat. I did chili using home canned meat. I did a beef stew using the home canned stew meat and potatoes and carrots and corn. I just, you know, came in here and grabbed anything that would be good in a beef stew. And that's the, the, whole, the homemade beef stew that we made. So again, I'm learning and I wanna keep learning and I wanna keep working in these items because there's no other way for me to learn, right? And to continue to grow in these skills. So these are my dwindling tomato products. I used to have two shelves thick with them. We are working through it. Pasta sauce that kind of grew legs and walked to the side here. So pulling those out. Again, that's because my helpers aim as close as they can. A couple big things of tomato sauce too that need to get moved over here. Okay, so then this marks my last, my last big can. And it's a variety of marinara sauce and plain tomato sauce. I think I have one big thing of tomato paste. We continue to work through tuna. Actually, I only have, I honestly think I need to stock up on tuna again because I only have enough tuna for us to do tuna salad two or three times because we usually use, and I do have some back here, let me. Okay, I must have enough tuna for us to do. I've got probably five of these. When I have a kiddo that wants to do tuna salad for lunch, they'll get eight of these and I usually tell them to do 12. You know I'm broken. That's not just for one lunch. If we're gonna open the cans and make the tuna salad, I'd like to at least get two lunches out of it. Now, we might only have six to eight eating lunch that day, or we might have 12 eating lunch that day. 
hungry kids, hungry teens, hungry folks who might eat two or three toasted tuna sandwiches. I mean, it just, they, I don't tell them, they tell me <laughs> how much they're eating and what they need that day. Uh, this is a random can of hot dog chili, which does not go over here. But anyway, so I do have more tuna back here. And this is an example of how I assess what we have and rotate through. This tuna is dated. You know why it was in the very back? Because it's dated 2025. This tuna is dated 2023. So what I will do, I will bring all of this tuna to the front and these other 2025 tunas are gonna be put in the back. Now I do have, yeah, I've got a lot of salmon. This can in my hand, for example, is dated July, 2025. I'm filming this, it is February, 2023. This can, okay, dated 2024. When I make tuna cakes, I'm opening 12 or more cans at a time. I'm making enough for dinner that night and to get some in the freezer for another dinner for later. So again, the salmon, I think I said tuna cakes, tuna cakes, salmon cakes, you know, <laughs> similar, similar. I will usually make those at the same time also. Uh -oh, we are gonna see rain down from heaven. Uh, but I wanna bring this tuna up and hopefully this is a good example to you. I know that my system is not perfect. Uh, there is a lot of planning and reading that you can do about rotating your food supply. But what I do for ours is, again, just like with the tomato products, I let it dwindle back to a point and then I'm able to move those items forward and then the space in the back, I'm able to refill. Only right now, since I have this tuna, I am not going to worry with refilling the tuna right now because the next project that I need to do is again, I need to do a lot with these canned salmon, but I still have more tuna back here. And then once we get through the canned salmon and as we make another dent in this tuna, then I will do a big load of tuna and I'll refill the canned salmon because salmon is something very healthy to have on the shelves. Whoops, don't lose it again. That you can do a variety of meals with and that it's shelf stable for many years. So that tuna is gonna stay back there. But again, for my family members who like to come down and get tuna. But their option is gonna be these cans that need to be used next. And I do have some more tuna back there that will pull forward. But there you go, that's a little tuna maintenance, little tomato maintenance. Uh, these pizza sauces, of course, we're gonna home can homemade pizza sauce. But in the meantime, we will get through times, like my kids will do a lot of English muffin pizzas, a lot of tortilla pizzas, a lot of homemade bread machine pizza dough pizzas, pizza bagels. So they'll just, they can just rip through <laughs> this pizza sauce very quickly. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna do chili dogs, and so I had some hot dog chili on the shelves, which I don't normally have. What was this? Yeah, this is dead for 2024, but I got a dozen or so cans of this at some point. I have a kiddo who's really into Sonic right now, really wants to do chili dogs. Well, I have some other little things of tomato paste also. I'm gonna make sure that some of these are coming over this way. And I had two different moms in my life this past week that I was able to come go through my pantry and get them both some basic quick and easy meal things that are also shelf stable that they could do with their family. We continue to work through beans, continue to work through canned fruit. I probably have 12 cans of pumpkin. I have one bag of pumpkin that I processed in fall 2021 in my freezer that I pulled out during all my recent updated freezer organization. If you would like to see the full freezer tour, my five full freezers and my four 
three to four refrigerators downstairs. I also have a video that's either out or coming out where we go through, we organize all of my freezers. We get the frozen fruit and veggie freezer set up. We get the beef freezer set up. We get the pork and chicken freezer. Of course, I have a dedicated freezer meal freezer. We go through and I show it all to you and you help me clean and organize it all. Also, I have a lot of spices here. Now, I still have some boxed broth. I've been making homemade broth for years, but I'm working on home candy and a lot of my broth. And I still have these boxes of broth that I'm going through and doing as well. Along with feeding all these people, I also do a lot of big batch freezer cooking guides and recipe developments and such. And I might need several boxes of broth for whatever it is I'm working on. We eat the food, don't worry about it, but broth is something that I have to have on hand. I do have some cream of soups and some condensed soups. Again, we're working through those. Uh, salad dressings, mustards, salsa, only two syrups and one maple syrup. I feel like I bought another one, but maybe that was it. I think I have one in the refrigerator downstairs that go upstairs that was open. I have probably 12 regular old mustard. We don't need to buy any mustard right now, right? We have mustard. All of this has a good date on it. We will continue to work through this mustard, but when I get down to two or three, I will then buy six to 12 of the mustard. So mayonnaise wise, I have three smaller things of mayonnaise. And so this week when I went to Costco, of course they have the Costco size, I bought two of these bigger mayonnaise. So we're good on mayonnaise. Four months, five months, again, the mayonnaise is gonna tell us. We're not gonna tell the mayonnaise. I have garlic down here. I have canned vegetables. I have canned a lot of beans. But again, when I do things with beans, I need 12 to 20 cans. Coconut milk, my pumpkin, like this, will have to be another video. I see up here with my fruits that are up here and the pumpkin and the coconut milk. And this is just from getting stuff. It needs some freshening up up there. But overall, I know where everything is. Everyone knows where everything is. Even I know some questions I got in my last grocery store in my basement video was, well, what about all the baking powder? What about all the baking soda? Just as an example, I filmed that video summer 2022. Let me think. Timeline, family injuries and experiences. Hmm, I had my own injuries. At some point, I had a kiddo that fell. That might have been the tripped over a stick running down the path. Anyway, we had a random swollen knee situation. Went to the doctor, got our x-rays, all of those good things. One of the things that the doctor prescribed for that kiddo, I feel like I'm doing a baking soda commercial, but every day they were supposed to take like two warm baths a day. Uh, again, not medical advice. Talk to your doctor, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but in each bath, there was so much baking soda and so much, woo, woo, woo. let's see, I don't know if I can grab it with this on, can I do it? And so much Epsom salts. So every couple days, I'm gonna make up and say it was a cup of each. Again, don't follow that for your medical advice, but we were running through a lot of baking soda and a lot of Epsom salts. And so all the baking soda that I had in that video, we went through during that injury. And so now I have three little boxes of baking soda and I have these two big boxes that I bought after that injury and that treatment. There, there was a lot of soaking in baths. And then a lot of this baking powder still is good on the dates. And then Christmas bacon and stuff. We worked through a lot of that. Seeing what else. I have one thing of black strap molasses that I'll just use in various recipes upstairs. I have another one down here. I also have quite a bit of vinegar, but I use vinegar for cleaning and I use vinegar for canning. Um, as an example, I also have just one thing of the whey protein powder down here. I have another one that's open upstairs. So I don't have multiples you know or a year's worth of everything even like the chicken 
there's so many different things we will do with canned chicken. I would like to replace that with my own home canned chicken. The thing is with a lot of home canned items, they had to be used within 12 to 18 months. And so many times the dates on these will be several years. That's 2024. But of course, as an example, if we're using 12 things of tuna, whenever we make tuna, we roll through. We just absolutely roll through stuff. The stuff that's slower, again right now, is the cadet soups and some of the cream of soups. But then the date on some of these, yeah, 2025. So as long as it gets used here or there, I don't need to buy any more. But I have it, and that's good. And then here's a random can of soup that I did get from Sharp Shopper. And this is dated June 2023. And I think this is the last can of sausage and chicken gumbo. It's probably 99 cents a can or 69 cents. And then there's a beef stew, 2024. So just want to give you some examples on how some things work down here. I do have some Progresso soups down here. And this is 2024. I do have pantry cabinets in my upstairs kitchen area. And as an example, I have not had Progresso soup in the cabinets up there. And I see a couple of them here, and so I'm just gonna take these upstairs, and that way, when a family member is looking in those cabinets, but I'll have these Progresso soups up there, and so I'll just take them from the grocery store in my basement down here. Yeah, okay, I'll leave the rest of it. There's a few more cans, but this will be good. And so coming down here, spending time in the pantry, organizing some things helps me keep up on what's down here, what needs to be used. Again, a lot of that fruit has been eaten and has been replaced with other random things. Like here's a thing of chicken, just one can of chicken out of place. And this is dated, hold on here, 2025. So this will need to, needs to get moved to the back there but I'm also holding multiple cans of soup at the moment. Thank you for spending this time with me updating and restocking my grocery store that I have in the basement. Again, this is all of my hopes and dreams to have this available. In the almost 25 years that my husband and I have been married, we've never had a home where I could have a dedicated pantry room like this. My last two houses were literally a closet. There was not a room available that I could have dedicated extra. It was like closet was all I had. So again, hopes and dreams. I'm 43. I'll be 44 next summer. So be happy for me that I got a room with, uh, what is this? Eight sets of shelves loaded up. Canning wise, I've seen a lot of videos where families do, like their goal is to do a thousand jars for the coming year and such. I think I have a couple hundred jars available. I don't think I own a thousand jars yet. We'll get there right we will we will definitely get there um and here i'm looking i got my poultry shrink bag for raising our meat birds giving you a quick chicken update right now i have about a dozen hens i have about eight roosters oops i have about 28 30 more little laying hen peeps that are a couple weeks old that we are getting going for this new year and thinking of my timeline I will probably start doing meat birds. I need to get those ordered. They should be ordered already. See, May, May, June, July. Yeah, probably about May. And then raise them out for about 12 weeks or so. So butcher at some point late July. I like to stagger the orders so that by the time we're doing the butchering, we have another load that we're raising and we'll butcher those later in the fall, October-ish, if I do, I might see August, September, October, yeah, October before the first frost. And then from our past year of raising our Cooney Cooney pigs for the first time, we have two. They're actually part Cooney Cooney and part IPP, Idaho Pasture Pig, which also has Cooney Cooney in it. But anyway, two of those are looking mighty big and I will be setting up for them to go to the butcher as well. I need to work with my freezer projects though, get some more freezer space and some more things canned up, but I'm proud of us. We're doing it. And real quick friends, before we close, I wanted to show you, I actually, we picked up the Walmart order. Alrighty. So I was actually able to get a lot of my stuff from Walmart. 
to get these bathroom pantry storage shelves fully stocked up again. Got all the hair conditioner right now, so let's get this unloaded. I was able to get everything locally and have Travis go and pick it up. So we picked up the additional dishwasher detergent and conditioner. And what else was it? Two more boxes of diapers and some wipes and some more toilet paper just to finish out our stash. So we do have a couple months worth for our family of 11. All right. So I was thinking of taking these paper towels out. I use these more out at my freeze dryer table and for other things like that. Again, we're not a big paper towel family at this time. We have been at different times, of course, but right now we're not. Um, so this thing of paper towels, I mean, might last me another year, but I keep one roll out on my downstairs um, countertop there by my freeze dryer. But that's okay. Okay, I think we have everything. We've got some more diapers I need to put away. Okay, final, final bonus grand finale of this area. You can see I have room for two more things of laundry detergent, probably four more if I put them over here. This is where I just had the bags of the Epsom salts. No more room for coffee. We're good on soap for a bit. Dish soap dishwasher detergent, hand soap, conditioner, of course our bleach wipes, we could hold another pack or two there, trash bags. We are loaded for a bit, mm -hmm. 11 people all day every day, plus guest, <laughs> 15 to 20, right? Uh, toilet paper, diapers and some pull-ups and some wipes, we're good. Also, grocery store my basement wise, we are caught back up now on syrup. Thank you so much for following along on my journey as a mom of nine, family of 11. Again, yes, my oldest son is a married man and he's a dad and I'm a Grammy, oh! And then my second oldest son is also graduated and he's doing all of his big grown-up things. He is still at home and my mom is also with us. So so that means we have eight children at home ages almost two through 19 plus my husband and myself and my mom and we work from home and school from home full time and I started doing big batch cooking over 20 years ago even when we were only a family of four and family of five as I went through nursing school and then as I worked full-time weekends as a charge nurse Stumbling into big batch cooking allowed me to make a big meal and get enough leftovers to get a couple meals out of it and get ahead of it that way. And then I started doing my one for now, one for later freezer cooking also for when I was gone on the weekends and also our busy early homeschool years, weeks. It was great to have a couple meals in the freezers ready to go. Over the years, things have grown and developed. Our family has continued to grow. We have so many teenagers and middle school kids and early elementary down to toddlers adults family coming over get togethers all the things so thank you for following along with all this massive mega food thank you for watching the grocery store in my basement update if you haven't seen my freezer organization and declutter and getting it all pulled together video to see in all of my freezers be sure to look down in the description and i will link that down there for you too thank you so much for watching friends i'll be sure to put up some other videos that you will enjoy watching and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.